Now, hundreds of Shiite Muslims rallied in Baghdad on the Al Quds Day, also known as Jerusalem Day. A neighboring Iran people in the capital city of Tehran set fire to effigies of U.S. President Donald Trump and Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. All of this comes as the U.S. tries to advance an Israeli-Palestinian peace plan, which Trump has also dubbed as the deal of the century. Iran marks Al Quds Day every year on the last day, on the last Friday of the Muslim holy month of Ramzan. Iran initiated the day back in 1979 to express support for Palestinians and oppose Israel's occupation of East Jerusalem. Iran does not recognize Israel and instead supports the militant group Hamas and Hezbollah. Israel also views Iran as its arch enemy in West Asia. This year's protests are vehement as the White House is trying to market a meeting in the Gulf state of Bahrain as the first phase of its West Asia peace plan. The meeting is scheduled for the 25th and 26th of this month in Bahrain. While the specifics or the political vision of the plan is yet not clear, it supposedly aims to include large-scale investment and infrastructure work in the Palestinian territories. But interestingly, the word is also that the peace plan has no priority to address the long-standing goal of Palestinian independence. In fact, the plan has already been rejected by Palestinian leaders and much of the Arab world. Lebanon's Iran-backed Hezbollah group has voiced its dissent against the U.S. peace plan. The heavily armed Shiite group warned that a war against Tehran will be a war against the entire region. يا صفقة الباطل يا صفقة تضييع الحقوق الفلسطينية والعربية والإسلامية هي صفقة تضييع المقدسات. يعني لا يحتاج الإنسان إلى الاستدلال بكل المعايير على أن هذه صفقة هي صفقة باطلة وصفقة عار تاريخي وصفقة جريمة تاريخية وبكل المعايير أيضا يجب أن تواجه ويجب أن يقف الجميع في وجهه أن السيد ترامب والإدارة عنده وأجهزة مخابراته يعرفون جيدا أن الحرب على إيران لن تبقى عند حدود إيران أن الحرب على إيران يعني كل المنطقة ستشتعل in other international stories, the global war on plastic is intensifying. Tanzania on the African continent and the East Asian country of the Philippines are doing their bit to reduce the usage and waste of plastic. Let's start from Tanzania. It has become the latest and the 34th African nation to ban plastic bags. Tanzania has banned the production, import, sale and use of plastic bags from today. Anyone who is caught manufacturing or importing plastic bags or plastic wraps could be fined for $430,000. Now, one could also face imprisonment for up to two years. Possessing or using plastic bags will lead to a fine of $87 or a week's jail time. No relief for tourists either. Travelers to Tanzania will now have to surrender their plastic bags in their possession before entering the country. The ban comes amid concerns that the restrictions have been put in place before ensuring the availability of suitable alternatives. Julikana, kwa mba ikifika teremosi mwuzi wa sita, hakuna kuingeza muda, hakuna kutazamana. Mfuku wa plastic hatu wataki kuona unatumika. Una, una on to Philippines. Now it has become the latest Southeast Asian nation to reject garbage from developed countries. The Philippines has sent back shipping containers full of waste back to Canada. The containers from Canada were apparently falsely labeled as recyclable waste when they actually were not. So the Philippines has sent them back. Canada is bearing the full cost of its transfer and disposal. Trade ay isang parang sobra siyang isang unacceptable na practice. Um, it is a deplorable practice that a lot of countries, especially in the global north, do um, to get rid of the waste that they cannot process in their own countries. So wherever waste trade happens, um, it impinges on human rights of the people who accept the waste. 127 countries across the globe have some sort of plastic bag legislation in place. 91 of the 127 nations have banned or restricted the manufacturing, importing and retail distribution of plastic. More than 300 million tons of plastic is being produced annually and at least 5 trillion of it ended up in the oceans. 
Now, in an unprecedented turn of events, there were eight co-champions in this year's Scripps National Spelling Bee contest. For the first time in the 94-year history of the contest, eight students outsmarted the dictionary and were named the Scripps Spelling Bee champions. All eight received the full winner's reward of $50,000 each in cash and a new custom-designed trophy. The eight winners this year are Rishik Gandhasri, Irin Howard, Saket Sundar, Shrutika Padi, Sohum Suktankar, Abhijay Kudali, Christopher Sarav and Rohan Raja. Six of the eight winners of the championship are of Indian descent. Indian American children have dominated the spelling competition over the years. They have won every Scripps National Spelling Bee since 2008. After the historic win of eight students this year, the Scripps National Spelling Bee itself said on Twitter that it was the dictionary that ultimately lost this year's event.